Hey everyone, hope you all are doing fine and healthy. Myself Asma from Sam, and you are watching my channel Teeny Talents, where I talk about book and such relating things. So my motive behind this video is to discuss about such a book, which is a masterpiece in nature, which holds very, very much value during the 19th century, and it still holds the same. So yes, we are going to talk about a book which is written by a very finest author belongs from the 19th century during the Victorian age. So without any further delay, let's get started. If you are a reader and develop interest in reading books, then I must say that the book I am going to pronounce, you must have heard it already. So the book that I am going to discuss is Jan Eyre written by Charlotte Bronte. So the book is published in 1847 during the 19th century and is a very fine work and still holds the same value. So the book is an autobiographical work of Charlotte Bronte, as in, and she has written the book under the show name Carrot Bell, because during that age, it is impossible for the women writers to find a publisher to publish their work. So in order to publish their work, they have to take help from the pseudonym so that their work got published. So in order to publish her work, Charlotte Bronte took the help of the pseudonym name Color Bell and under that name she has published her work that is Jen Eyre. So Jen Eyre is an lengthy book which holds more than 500 pages. So if you are a light reader and don't want to invest most of your time in reading such a heavy book then I must say I am here to help. Without reading the book you can understand the plot that I am about to explain. So the book, as I said, is an autobiographical work of Charlotte Bronte. The book has 38 chapters in total. The book starts with Jane Eyre's childhood, where she was kept behind the red room by her aunt. Her aunt was not fond of her and has often said horrible things, which was terrible to the little Jen Eyre and her aunt as soon as possible wanted to get rid of her. So he sent her to a boarding school. So Jen Eyre spent most of her childhood in learning the Christian scriptures and she completed her schooling from there. The author showed the character Jen Eyre as an independent woman. Behind her plain and obscure look, Jen Eyre never fails to establish her voice. No matter who is in front of her, she never fails to establish her voice and to say whatever she used to say. So after finishing her schooling, she applied for a job that is governor's in the Thornfield Hall. And soon she was called for the job. There she met a girl that is Adelaide and she was at the post of governor who used to teach the little Adelaide the lessons and along with that the art. So Jan Eyre's life in Thornville was quite nice, which was not in her earlier life. So there she met Mr. Rochester and soon they fell for each other. Mr. Rochester played a very vital role in this book. Mr. Rochester is a wanderer and very rarely visits Thornville Hall. Soon Jan Eyre and Mr. Rochester developed feelings for each other. Mr. Rochester wanted to be wanted to get married with Jen Eyre as soon as possible. And Jen Eyre, behind her obscure and plain status, has given her permission to Mr. Rochester to be his wife. But the point here is Mr. Rochester is already married and the secret is hidden from Jen Eyre. So this is a very interesting part of this book where we are going to meet another character that is Bertha Mason. So in this book, we have already made Butter Basin in the earlier chapters, but with that time, we need not know that who is Butter Mason. The author has added the character Buster Butter Mason to show the status of the omen during the Victorian age. The sufferings and the status of the omen is well discussed to the character of Butter Mason. So when the novel starts, we found that Jen Ayo was locked behind a red room. And with the introduction of the Butter Mason, the same happens. Butter Mason, who is 
introduced to us as a lunatic woman is also kept behind a dark room on the day of their marriage jen ayer has known about the secret that mr rochester was hiding so long jen ayer get to know about the woman that mr rochester is married to that is butter mason jen ayer felt cheated she felt that mr rochester has kept her in a dark place she came to mr rochester and confronted him that at this moment i need some time to console myself and to get on a point what just happened mr rochester on the other hand was trying to prove his point that his wife is a lunatic and jen i is the one he with whom he has wholeheartedly in love with and he wished to marry jen ayer without jen ayer his life will be incomplete but jen ayer was then ayer was adamant and needed some time to heal so at that moment after revealing the secret jen ayer left mr rochester in that state she doesn't know where she will go but at that moment it was very much necessary to seek such a solitude in order to console her heart so jen ayer left Tronfield Hall and Mr. Rochester together. So now Jen Ayer is penniless and jobless too. She knows no place where she will seek solitude. She was moving towards such a place where she know nothing about. But as the author describes her as an independent woman, soon she made her destiny. She made some people who give her shelter along with a profitable job. She there stays for a while, and learnt the walks that the people used to do. And with that, she starts living her life in that place, leaving behind the memories of Mr. Rochester and Tronfield Hall. In this novel, the another element that Charlotte Bronte uses that is the superstitious power. Jane Eyre often hears the voice of Mr. Rochester behind the rocks. She feels that Mr. Rochester is calling her out. Mr. Rochester is calling her to visit Tronfield Hall to meet Mr. Rochester to know about the status of Mr. Rochester. So when Jane Eyre was leaving her life, that person, who the author described to us as a gentle person, offered her to visit with him to India to be his wife. But as we all know, Jane Eyre is already in love with Mr. Rochester. In order to seek solitude, she left Rochester in the Thornfield Hall, but she never wished to marry another person in her entire life. So after getting the proposal, then I ever, Jan Ayer denied and come back to Mr. Rochester at once. When he come, when she came back to Mr. Rochester and Thornfield Hall, nothing was same as she left before, and much, and misfortunate incident took place when Jan Ayer left the place, and now. The Rochester says he is about to meet is crippled and blind. He holds no wealth or value that he used to before. Before we met Mr. Rochester as an independent man, but now the Mr. Rochester that Jan Ayer has met is a crippled and blind man who needs help of another person to even drink a cup of water. and after hearing the voice of jen ayer mr rochester felt disturbed she wanted to confront who was there who was with the sweetest voice that at that earlier mr rochester used to love with mr rochester was inquiring is that jen ayer his sweet little girl with little fingers and jen ayer has confronted that she came back to give company to mr rochester to read out the books that mr rochester used to hear so on that note mr rochester and jen ayer get married and the novel ends so that is a summary of the novel jen ayer by charlotte bronte and if you have found the video valuable don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel and we have already if you have already read the book jen ayer please leave your valuable feedback in the comment section so That's all for today. We'll be meeting in our next video. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye bye.